I'm back. What's going on, everybody? It's Nate Irvin from Fit to Function. And now that my wife has successfully walked across the stage, Alicia Hill Irvin. Woo! That's my wife! <laughs> I can get back to giving you the health and fitness tips that you deserve to have because we all deserve to know the information we need to live the longest, most functional life that we can. And today's tip, we are going to be talking about hamstring pulls or just any muscle pull in general because North Carolina native Chris Paul, who is a member of the Houston Rockets, is currently playing in the Western Conference Finals, fighting for a chance to win an NBA championship for the first time. But in the waning moments of Game 5, Chris Paul suffered a severe hamstring injury. Now, how severe it really is, I am not quite sure, but it was severe enough to where he had to leave the game, as well as he is questionable for game six, which is a very important game for them in that series. So, what I would like to do is share a treatment that I've come up with for hamstring injuries to get players back to their sport, to what it is that they want to be doing as fast as possible. So, what this treatment consists of is stretching while icing all together. Now, I came up with this premise based on what happens to our body when we fall and scrape our knee or fall and scrape our elbow. Now, if we look at that real quick, if you were to fall down and scrape your elbow, the last thing you're going to do is bend your arm and try to hold it this way. And it's because when you do that, all of the skin cells that have now been taken off have to now heal. So you have this flesh wound here. And if you pull at it this way, where you stretch that skin out, it is going to burn and it's going to sting a whole lot more because now you have more distance to go for your body to actually try to be healing itself. All the little smaller cuts and sutures that are in that wound are going to be more exposed and they're going to start to rip and they're going to start to tear. So instead of doing this and holding your arm, what you're going to do, you're going to straighten it out and hold it this way. And that's because now all those small sutures and all those little small cuts, they're more closed, they're not exposed as much, and you can keep more compression there, and more blood can get to a smaller surface area a lot easier, so you can heal a whole lot first, faster, versus have your arm, arm bent up, and you have more surface area to cover, more blood that has to get there, and it's a lot harder for the wound to heal that way. It's the same thing with muscles. When we pull a muscle, a muscle, they're usually lined up real nice and straight like spaghetti in a box. But when we have a strain, a sprain, or a tear, what happens is that muscle overstretches. Then it wants to clam together real tight so that it can get more blood to that tight area. How do we know this? Let's look at what happens when you pull a muscle. So if you see somebody running, typically when they go and they're doing whatever uh, position it is that they're running in, what you don't see, you don't see them straighten out their leg and do this too much. They're typically trying to get that knee bent up. You see them hobble on one leg. You see that hamstring contract and bend up. And then when they're on the ground, kind of like what we saw with Chris Paul, we saw him on the ground with his knee bent up, favoring that hamstring. Because again, it is a shorter, the, to make the hamstring shorter, what we have to do, we have to flex our foot back this way. And it makes that really long muscle a whole lot shorter and more blood can get to that short area versus getting to this long stretched out area and getting it healed that way. This is why we go through all the stretch. This is why one of the first thing the trainer or the physical therapist wants to do with someone when they have a pulled hamstring is go ahead and start stretching it because as soon as that muscle gets to tighten up and relax on its own, it's gonna bunch itself together real, real tight. And the next morning, anyone who has pulled a hamstring, even after having therapy the day before, having the stretching, the heat, the stem, the ice, all of these things going at the next morning, they wake up and it is so tight in that muscle because the muscle just wants to get as tight together on itself as it can so it can get more blood to that smaller surface area and start the healing process in a way that it feels is correct. But the thing is, when those, that muscle bunches up real tight like that, the muscles go from being spaghetti in a box, nice and straight, to being spaghetti in a pot, all jumbled up, and that's where we get the scar tissue from, or the adhesions that you may hear of with muscles. And then when you try to st stretch, it is so tight in that muscle because everything is healed, bound up like spaghetti in a pot. Well, my treatment that I've come up with is a way to help the muscle heal nice and long because we all know that we want long, strong muscles. They should be nice and loose, stretched out, looking more like what I said, spaghetti in a pot, um, spaghetti in a box versus spaghetti in a pot. Because <clears throat> one of the things that we have to understand about any injury, we are human beings and we are the 
only computers on the planet that the very second we get injured, the very second we get sick, our body instantly starts to heal itself. It instantly starts to attack whatever is the virus in the body, whatever is the injury in the body, and it tries to fix it. That is just what the brain is programmed to do that, and its way is jumble everything up real tight together, get more blood to that tightly condensed area, but the result of that, it leaves tight scar tissue that is hard to break up and it makes it hard to heal or hard to move and do things that you want to do because now the body has healed incorrectly. Yes, it healed on its own, but it didn't do it the right way because we don't want short, tight, strong muscles. We want long, flexible, strong muscles. So the technique that I came up with is to do just that, help muscles heal long so that they heal the right way versus healing short and bunched up the wrong way. I call this treatment cryo stretching. And the whole premise of it is to get the muscles in the longest, most stretched out position that they can tolerate being in and freezing them in that position. So what do I mean by that? So let's look at the hamstring. Chris Paul pulled his hamstring. So if I have a pulled hamstring and I want this thing to heal nice and long, what I'm going to do, I'm not just going to stretch because that's what a lot of trainers instantly go to. Stretch, 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 and then they're going to throw ice on you and let you sit with that ice and just have you sit in there and let that ice kind of help get some of the swelling and inflammation out of it. But it shouldn't just be stretch to get it loose and then ice to get some of that inflammation out. It should be the both of them together because what happens when you just stretch, 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 once you're done stretching, that muscle is slowly going to tighten itself back up. It's going to try to get back to that tight condensed area because it, again, the brain feels that that's the most efficient way to heal because it is less blood that it has to get to the area because everything is condensed in real tight. Well, like I said, we know that's not the way to heal correctly because you're gonna have scar tissue and you're gonna be limping the next morning when you try to get up because everything is gonna be tight in that muscle. What we wanna do instead of just icing and just stretching alone, we wanna ice and stretch together. So you wanna get your ice pack. You wanna get that on the muscle, right there in the belly of it where you feel, okay, that's really where it's really tight at, that's where the pull happened at, and while you're on that ice, you wanna go ahead and start stretching. Get that muscle to heal and start healing while it's nice and long. Because what the ice is gonna do, it's gonna force the swelling and the blood to get out of the area. Now, we know that we need blood to come into the area for it to start healing, but if we're forcing that, or that blood out and then stretching to force it to come back in, we're causing that muscle to heal in a way that's more beneficial to you. Because now, while you're stretching, while it's on that ice, all those little small sutures and those other tears that are on that muscle, because when you tear a muscle, you gotta realize, yeah, you've torn muscle fiber. Even if you just pulled it, you've torn some muscle fibers in the belly of that muscle somewhere. And what you need to do is get those muscle fibers to stay stretched out, stay pulled out so that the scabs can heal or the scars, whatever you wanna call them, because the scabs, scars, all of it's the same that's gonna build up on that muscle. You want that stuff to start building on that muscle at a longer point away from each other so that when you go to move the next morning, that scar tissue isn't bound up like this. The scar tissue is stretched out nice and loose so that even though you may hurt, you're not gonna notice it as much, as much because now, instead of that scab being that scab tight on your elbow and you let it heal this way, when you go to bend your arm, all that scar tissue that built up on that scab is gonna start to pop and tear away at your skin and that doesn't feel good. None of it does because it is it's adhered to this position here. This is the way it healed and this is the way it's assuming that you are going to be. But as soon as you use your arm the way you're supposed to, all that scar tissue, all that skin that is healed and crusted up on there starts to break apart. It starts to cause all those small sutures again, and it hurts. The exact same thing funny. happens to your muscles when they get scars, when they have scar tissue. They heal nice and short where it feels good and comfortable. Then you tell that muscle to do its job and it starts to stretch out and expand or contract or move whatever direction you're trying to get that muscle to move in. In the case of basketball, you try to take that step to run, that muscle stretches out, but it has all these adhesions and all that scar tissue and it starts to pop just like that scab on your knee or your elbow does and it hurts. It's because there are small little sutures there that whole time that have healed nice and tight versus nice and long. So we want to get those muscle fibers and those sutures to heal long versus short. And ice 
combined with stretching is the way to do that. That ice while you're stretching is also perfect for therapists to be doing their job as well because they typically can stretch you and get you to positions a lot easier than you can force yourself into. And having that ice there to kind of get that swelling out while they're doing that is perfect for them to get you into the position that you need to be in to let that muscle relax. And I'm not saying that you need to hold all these stretches for five, 10 minutes at a time. Normal stretches, 30 seconds, hold it, come back out of it, go back into your stretch, and you just want to do multiple different stretches that hit every area of that muscle that you feel a pull in. If you, in Chris Paul's case, we're going to go right with that hamstring because that's the muscle that he pulled. First, we'll start with bending that knee up so that that way now we're stretching the high part of that hamstring. So we want to move that ice higher up onto that hamstring and stretch out the high hamstring with this knee bent. Then we get rid of the roll. We lift that leg down straight and we turn the ice pad the long way to get to the entire belly of the muscle and down behind the knee because when we straighten that knee out, now we're stretching that entire length of that muscle. We want to get that stretch there. Then if we want to hit the outside of that hamstring, we turn that toe out to the outwards, outside, and now you're going to hit that outside, that lateral part of the hamstring, and vice versa, turning that toe inwards and stretching forward. Now we're going to stretch that inner part of that hamstring. So we're going to try to hit every part of that hamstring while it's on that ice to get it as loose as it possibly can. Now, in my research and what I've done using this technique to work with myself and other athletes who have had pulled hamstrings, pulled quads, pulled triceps, I have been able to successfully get them back to playing their sport within a week with this technique without any pain or keep them from having any type of setbacks in the future because of that injury, just simply because we made the muscle heal correctly. Because remember, the human brain is going to make you heal one way or the other because it knows that you're hurt and it's going to start healing instantly. But the question is, are you going to let it heal on its own and heal incorrectly, or are you going to step in and do the right things to make it heal the correct way? So within a week, I have successfully gotten people back to 80 to 100% from a grade one, grade two muscle strain with this technique. Just stretching the muscle out while it's on ice and going through any modality or mobilities, any techniques that need to be done while that ice is there so that the muscle can be healing in a long position so that all that scar tissue doesn't bind itself up in that one area. Now, the one thing that has been the go along with this is I've always got these injuries within one to two days of the injury actually happening. If you can apply this treatment within minutes of the uh, injury happening, you can actually shorten the recovery time even greater just simply because before the human brain can take over and start healing, too much the wrong way, you have to get in there and start healing the right way and keep that muscle nice and strong or nice and long so that it can heal that way. Well, a lot of people who have had hamstring pulls or muscle pulls are probably familiar with uh, some type of stick or roll like this that a therapist has used to kind of massage the muscle out, pushing down against all that scar tissue and all that hurting, that pain that you feel when a roll or any type of tool is rolled across a muscle in your hamstring and you feel those bumps every single time. That's scar tissue. That's all that is. And that is proof that the scar tissue builds up when we let the body heal on its own because it doesn't know any better. It just knows. Get everything close together, heal it while it's nice and tight and compact it together, and keep on about your business. But all that tightness, that spaghetti in a pot, that's all that you feel when you feel someone rolling across that muscle, whether it be with their fingers, whether it be with a roll or some type of tool to help break down that scar tissue. If you are with, or if you're outside of that first hour, if you're within the first 24 or 48 hours of your injury, you're gonna need that to happen first before you can apply this technique because your body has already started to heal. So, Chris Paul, if you have not gotten this to treatment, if someone isn't doing this cryo stretch with you, you need to have someone break that scar tissue down that's already starting to build up. There are tons of tools out there that therapists use to treat scar tissue on a regular basis. Whatever your therapist just so happens to have, have them use that, break down that scar tissue that is starting to build up on that hamstring. After they've broken that down within the first five to 10 minutes of them getting that broke down, get that ice on there and start stretching it. Get that muscle long and make it start healing while it's freezing. 
after you've gone for about 15 minutes on that ice with doing the stretches, hitting the high hamstring, the low hamstring, the lateral and the medial sides of that hamstring, then you wanna get up and go through your therapeutic exercises. Do your hamstring curls, do your one-legged squats, do your bounds, do your jumps, whatever regiment they have you doing to work to keep strength in that leg. Because again, we go back to it. What do you need to have a healthy muscle? Long, strong, and endurance. So after you've done your resistance work and gotten that work at into it and gotten it stronger, you need to get back on that ice again. Ice and stretch together because now we've got more inflammation in there because when you do exercise and you do work, that brings in all that blood flow that we just pushed out with that ice. So we need to get it back out of there while still keeping that muscle long while in the process. So YouTube, Facebook, rest of the world, Chris Paul, I hope this video helps. I hope that this gets you back on the court for tomorrow and have has you ready to play and give it your best shot to win the Western Conference Finals so that you can get to that first NBA championship. All right? If you guys have any questions on this technique or any other injuries that you may have, hit me a, leave me a comment in the section below. Send me a message on Facebook, on YouTube, on Instagram, wherever you see a place where you can send me a message, send me a message. If I have the answer, I would love to get it out to you. If I don't know the answer, I will do my best to find that answer and get it back to you one way or the other. So I hope this video helps. Be on the lookout for more videos because now that I have more time again, I, am, I have a ton of videos, a ton of information that I'm looking forward to getting out to you guys and I can't wait to get that to you. So be on the lookout for more videos from Fit to Function. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel. Follow me on Facebook, follow me on Instagram, or any other social media platforms that you guys see me on. And I will see you guys in the next video. Be fit, be functional, be blessed. Peace.